Hey, it's been a week already, and you know what that means. Time for another episode of the News You Missed Recap, the show that takes all the major gaming news articles, recaps them into one podcast formatted video so you can catch up. Don't be out of the loop. Click subscribe today, and every week you'll be recapped and updated on gaming news. Now, before I get into the news, I'd just like to give you a friendly reminder that I do have a Patreon where I do give away game consoles, and you can see my content a day early there. If you feel like supporting the channel more directly, you can always follow me on Twitter and Discord at ProtoMario. And other than that, ladies and gentlemen, again, being subscribed here means you're also automatically entered into the Nintendo Switch giveaway I do every month. Now, let's jump right into the news. And I want to begin with Nintendo has no intention to reveal new hardware at E3. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be new hardware, a new Nintendo Switch, or perhaps a new home base console. So... Nintendo vehemently was trying to hide the fact that Fortnite was coming to the Switch. And just because it's not coming to the E3 doesn't mean that they're not going to do a Nintendo Direct and announce two new models of the Nintendo Switch, a different model of the Nintendo Switch, some other type of hardware, or something else that they have coming up. So just because it's not coming to the E3 doesn't mean it's not coming at all. Continuing the Nintendo Switch news, we have something very, 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 very strange. Um, Walmart is selling a Nintendo Switch for $76,000. Who cares about the $506,000? Uh, $76,000, okay? Wow. Um, mm, mm. I, I gotta tell you, man, it's interesting that this is out of stock, too. You know, people people really get into buying the most expensive things, and this is, uh, this is no different. Seventy-six grand, folks. You could buy a house or this Nintendo Quack. Switch off Walmart. So oddly enough, Yoshi's Woolly Worlds composer was retweeting negative comments about Yoshi's Crafted World soundtrack. Uh, apparently he was retweeting things without them knowing what they actually said. That would be part of the blame. If you're on Twitter and you're a content creator, you should really be bound to a certain way of how you act, who you interact with, what you say, how you say it. Because you're permitted to have your own personal account. but. I prefer to fall under the carpet of anomaly, so nobody attacks me in real life. Nobody attacks my real personage. It's my character, Proto Mario. So if I say something on Twitter people don't like, that's fine. My house doesn't get egged. I don't get death threats sent to my house personally. I don't have people waiting for me outside my house. That's how I feel about it. I don't know if you feel the same way. You can go ahead. Let me know your comments down below. Do you think you should have a real Twitter linked with your real name, or do you think you should stay anonymous? I'd love to hear your replies down in the comments down below. Super Mario Maker 2 launches on June 28th. If you guys were wondering, that's going to be for the Nintendo Switch. Of course, it's not going to be for the Wii U, but the original was for the Wii U. The list of reasons to keep a Wii U is getting smaller and smaller. Mario Maker was one of the biggest ones, and, well, hey, sorry. That's gone now, too, because Super Mario Maker 2 is going to surpass that. There's going to be plenty of cool glitches and awesome levels that you're going to be able to play, build, and run. It seems that the Switch is just utterly replacing the Wii U and taking all of its good games over to its console as well. Also, there's a strange stylus that you're going to be able to get. It's a bonus stylus. It's an offer that you're going to be able to... Uh, get into if you're really interested in getting Mario Maker you might want to look into this because the stylus is pretty cool again something you might be interested in especially if you're going to be playing Mario Maker a lot on your switch you don't want to be putting your fingers on your screen so there's that now we're going to go into something not so great Mario and Zelda's new VR modes are not good so unfortunately this is what ends up happening so the weirdest thing was that this is supposed to be VR, right? And you're supposed to be able to put the switch up to your face with the, the cardboard fallout and have, have some type of VR modes with these games. But the games themselves are not being fully played. They're relegated to certain levels and certain sections of the game for this VR mode specifically, which, number one, sucks and is stupid. Why can't you just play the full game in VR mode? Number two, most of the time you're holding the thing up to your face. So there, there's a big problem right there. Why can't you detach the controllers and put a strap on it and just keep it on your head, sit down, lay down, and play with the Joy-Cons? It would really help handicap people as well to be able to do that. People with neck injuries, problems like that. 
But no, you can't do that. So that's going to tire your hands out holding it up to your face constantly. I mean, this thing is literally the Virtual Boy all over again. Except that it doesn't cost nearly as much as a Virtual Boy. So I guess that's the saving grace. And you don't have to buy exclusive games for it. You already have the games. But at the end of the day, Nintendo is still sucking when it comes to VR. What is the issue? Also, when you're in handheld mode, Zelda Breath of the Wild does not run well. I mean, it runs, there's no question in that, and it's playable, quote unquote. But it definitely gets a way better boost in docked mode versus handheld mode. And Super Mario Odyssey is okay, but when you're using VR and you got it close to your face, you want everything to be extremely fluent and smooth, and it is not. And it's also extremely grainy because you are seeing things much, much closer than at a faraway angle. So yeah, it's not good. And there's constant reminders to take breaks. If you want the full story, if you want the full review, the opinion piece, you can go ahead and check it out in the link down in the description below. I wouldn't pay full price for Nintendo VR right now. On to something a little more bright and awesome. Psyduck and Snowball are going to be in the Build-A-Bear workshop. Yeah, so... This is probably for the Detective Pikachu thing. You know, we're promoting Detective Pikachu, so this is a crossover. $32 each. I've bought multiple Build-A-Bears for uh, Autumn. So they're very, very nice. They're substantial. They feel uh, worth the money. You know, they don't feel like a very cheap plushie at all. And they're cool. Both of them look really, really nice. I find it very funny that Psyduck made it. Again, I believe that was the creator's favorite Pokemon, so no shock there. So, you guys might want to check into that if you're really interested in Pokemon. Also, Latios and Latias are coming for Research Rewards in Pokemon Go. If you are unable to get them in Raids, don't worry, you can get them in Research Rewards. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, I don't know, man. If you need the details on that, you can go ahead and check the description once again. I'll have it linked there. But for those who play Pokemon Go, another way to get legendary Pokemon without having grade. So, there's a 7-Eleven. <laughs> this is so weird. 7-Eleven has Mr. Mime Juice. Yeah. So apparently people were making a big deal about it. It was a big issue for some reason. I don't know. You could call it big, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, quote unquote, oh, it's a big issue. It's not really. But it was such an issue that 7-Eleven actually issued a statement. The 7-Eleven promotion for Pokemon Detect Pikachu is intended to be a fun incorporation of recognizable Pokemon from the upcoming movie. The mystery flavor element is intended to be thematically in line with the film, which focuses on Detect Pikachu, a world-class detective who has mysteries to solve. It is not intended to imply that the drinks are made of or by Mr. Mime. There is no lore associated with the drinks. The internet does what it does, and Mr. Mime Juice comes from Mr. Mime, right? No, it doesn't. Come on. We're going to continue on with uh, somebody who found a hilarious Pokemon ad. This is so bad for a bootleg Pokemon game. All right. It has Ash riding a bike, and then Blaziken jumps out and stops him, and then is defeated and captured. And the music is just absolutely awful on it. Um, the Pokemon, when it got captured, is clearly Blaziken. It says, congratulations, you got Dark Mewtwo. I mean, really? I can't make this up. This is awful. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, link the trailer down in the description below. Once again, you can go ahead and have a look at what this person posted. And it's pretty funny. Have a laugh. It it'll, it'll give you a laugh. It seems that Famitsu asked 7,000 people about their favorite game during the January 1989 to April 2019. And the most amazing thing happened. We have had over 30 years of gaming. And the top number one game that these people really enjoyed was Chrono Trigger. Number two, Breath of the Wild. And number three, Nier Automata. So... These games are very extremely deep story driven games with potentials and interesting outcomes. I would argue that Breath of the Wild is one of the worst Zelda games I've ever played due to many, many, many factors. But you like what you like and I'm not going to downplay you at all for that. Now I'll agree that Nier Automata is a great game. I have not had the chance to play it all the way through, but I would absolutely love to. But I just find it very interesting that a game a game from the early 90s, Chrono Trigger, is the top spot. It's not Final Fantasy 7. It's not Final Fantasy 15. It's not 
uh, yeah, there's so many games. It's not even Earthbound, which is pretty interesting, too. I would have thought Earthbound would be on this list, but no, it's Chrono Trigger. So, what's your favorite game from this time period? 30 years, you'd have to pick three. Go ahead and list them in the comments down below. We're going to move on. Epic says it'll stop store exclusive when Steam offers a better cut. Well, duh, that's how business works. I really don't have to go into this, do I? The title says it all. But with Steam and Epic Store exclusivity, this is very stupid and bad stuff. We're talking like people came to the PC and the PC structure to get away from the console exclusivity. People still don't like how Nintendo is exclusive to Nintendo. I understand why they are, but people don't like it. Same with Sony, same with Microsoft. Look, in regard to talking about the best platform, it would definitely be PC. But if we look over at consoles, the PlayStation 4 is one of the top selling consoles of this generation currently, right? But it doesn't matter if the game that you're playing is free to play and on every console there possibly is. Fortnite. Tons of people are playing these Battle Royale games and not playing your exclusive games. So I really don't understand what Epic Games is trying to leverage here. People just won't play the games. People like Borderlands 3. I'm not going to say that people haven't been waiting for this game and people don't want this game bad, but they will wait. They will keep waiting. And some PC players have an Xbox One X and a PS4 Pro, and they'll just get Borderlands for that, those systems instead of having that Epic Game Launcher on their PC. I will not get the Epic Game Launcher. I won't do it. I don't care. I don't care. I'll wait. I'm a patient person. The exclusivity will leave that store eventually. So the way I see it is, it's very, very stupid to have exclusives, especially when the top played games are the free-to-play games right now, because people are broke. So of course they're going to play Fortnite, Apex Legends, things like that. This is how it is, and that's how I see it. You could be different, and I'd love to hear from it. Days Gone, Surviving a Divided World. Days Gone is an interesting game. It has a uh, very unique ideals on it. Uh, you guys should definitely check out the trailer. Check out some gameplay. It got a 7.75 out of Game Informer. I don't know. It's a pretty average game. A little bit above average if you want to look into it. Again, same survival type game. Monsters, kill the monsters, survive in the wild, things like that. But this one is pretty interesting. It's a new release. And if you've been looking for games like that for a while, something new outside of what you already have, it's a game that you can get into. Madden NFL debuts new choice-driven career mode, face of the franchise. So yeah, there's a lot of Madden news because new Madden games are coming out. Check out the new Fortnite X Avengers trailer, Endgame. Guys, Endgame has come out, so Fortnite's probably going to have a lot to do with it. I can't say for sure, but I mean, I, if I was a betting man, I'd definitely say they're probably going to have something going on with it. If you want to check the trailer out, I'll always link it down in the description below. But yeah, uh, they had stuff going on with Thanos before. They probably will again. Bloodborne's board game is making millions on Kickstarter. A while ago, I had announced that there is a Bloodborne uh, game that is coming out on Kickstarter. They have these pieces. They have these sets, bosses, things like that. It's pretty cool. I think it's awesome. And apparently the Kickstarter is working very, very well. If you want to get into it, make sure to check out Kickstarter. Overwatch teases a Storm Rising follow-up with a lore tweet. So we might be getting something new with Overwatch. I don't know. It's very hard to tell. And finally, League of Legends streamer banned from Twitch for a slur he says was missed heard apparently he was using a slur which he says the word was actually idiot uh apparently they misheard what he had said i don't know he's appealing this you call it what you want on one side i think as a major streamer as a personality that a lot of people are watching you need to have a lot of confidence in yourself you need to not go to that side of vulgarity and you need to represent something much greater than yourself so that the people who watch you understand that you can do this stuff. You don't have to fall into those very negative emotions and very negative reactions. On the other side, if you're kicked back playing a video game, having a good time, you should be able to swear up and down. You should be able to throw your controller. You should be able to do whatever you want. 
because it's yours and you don't really care. At the end of the day, we fall into this weird gray area where some rules are enforced and others are not, where there's potentially women half naked streaming and that's a-okay, but when somebody says uh, a word like retard, Kotaku is going to make a full-blown story over it and it's just a mispronunciation from a Japanese song. This is the world we live in and this is just how it is. Life's unfair. I do think that if you're a major streamer, you should refrain from using slurs and negative words and going to the negative side of things because of stuff like this. But that's the only reason. I still believe that people should have their freedom and the freedom to do whatever they want. As a streamer myself, and I have streamed many, many times, I have curved myself in many ways, shapes, and form from saying very negative things and overreacting in a very, very negative way. And if I can do it, I think a lot of other people can do it. But sometimes the pressure is too much and it can get to all of us. So I understand when something gets blurted out and it's not necessarily meant or they misspeak. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear your comments down in the section below. Now that'll do it for this week's news you missed. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can click that like button share it with everyone because it's absolutely free just letting people know i exist is a great way to support me and you can click that subscribe button stay up to date with me once again i'll be back here next week recapping the weekly news now i've been your host for tomorrow and i'm signing out this weather's killing me i don't know if it's killing you but i gotta go blow my nose about a hundred more times by the end of the day i'll see you guys in the next episode as always good gaming god bless and thanks for watching